There are 12 books listed on summer reading list. William is supposed to read two books from the reading list. How many different pairs of books could he read? Use letters to represent books. Suppose there are two books on the list. How many different pairs of books could he read? Suppose there are three books on the list. How many different pairs of books could he read? Look for a pattern, then continue the pattern for 12 books. Let's see what's going on here. If he had two books, A and B, he would have one pair. If he had three books, A, B, and C, he would have three pairs, A, B, B, C, A, C. If he had four books, he would have six pairs. If he had five books, he would have 10 pairs. If he had six books, he would have 15 pairs. So let's analyze this picture a little further. Six books, A, B, C, D, E, F. How many pairs? A can be paired up with B, A, B, a C, A D, A E, A F. B can be paired up with B C, B D, B E, B F. Note we didn't count B A again because A has already been paired up with B. C can be paired up with C D, C E, C F. D can be paired up with D E, D F. E can be paired up with E F. <coughs> now. Clearly, I don't have anything left to pair up with F because F has already been paired up with everything, so I don't want to count anything twice. If you now carefully count all these lines, A, B, B, C, C, D, D, B, A, D, you're going to see you're going to get, end up getting 15 pairs. So we're going to solve this problem by analyzing the case with six books and we are going to generalize from there and we'll soon see what we mean. Now we discussed uh, this picture. I have six books A, B, C, D, E, F and I have 15 pairs. So let's write down six books. Six books will give me 15 pairs. Note the letters are books and the lines are lines connecting the dots or the books are pairs. Note each book can be paired up with five other books. So A can be paired up with five books, B can be paired up with five books, C can be paired up with five books, D can be paired up with five books, E can be paired up with five books, F can be paired up with five books. So altogether, let's see what we get if we multiply six by five. I have six books. Each book can be paired up with um, five other books or five of the remaining books. So I should get 30 pairs. Well, when I count, I get 15. So what's wrong with this argument? Well, this is what's uh, wrong with this argument. Each pair, for instance, AC, in this technique, AC is being counted twice. Once as a pair for A and a second time as a pair for C. Exact same thing can be said for any given pair here. The this pair, FD, is being counted as F's pair and then again as D's pair. And that's the problem. That's why this is counting everything twice. So to fix that, to fix that, we'll have to divide 30 by 2 and we're going to get 15. There will be 15 pairs. So don't leave your answer here. You multiply if you have six books and each book is paired up with five of the remaining books or can be paired up with five of the remaining books so you take six multiply it by five then divide the answer by two so the, your final answer would be 15 which is consistent now note our question wants us to find what would happen if I had 12 books I am not going to draw a picture I'm not going to draw a picture because 
it's not worth my time, I want to use mathematics. So this is what the question wants us to find. Twelve books, how many pairs? How many pairs? So how do we do that? Well, if you use the technique shown here, you could do something like this. You could say 12 books times each book will be paired or can be paired up with 11 of the remaining books. You don't pair the book with itself. That won't be a pair. That would be the same book. 12 times 11 is 132. Now, 132 can be the right answer because 132 includes every pair twice. So you have to divide 132 by 2. And what do you get when you divide 132 by 2? You get 66. That's your answer. We're going to solve the same problem in a different way now. So let's start with the case where we had six books and 15 pairs. And let's write it down. Six books fifteen pairs. Now take a look at this. The first book A can be paired up with five of the remaining books. The next book B can be paired up with five books, I know, but it's pairing with A and B has already been counted so we're gonna say it can be paired up with four other books. C can be paired up with the remaining five books. True, but C's pairing with A has already been counted and C's pairing with B has already been counted. So I'm going to say C can be paired up with three additional books. Uh, using the exact same argument, D can be paired up with two additional books. E can be paired up with just one more book, that's F. And F can be paired up with the remaining five, sure, but it's pairing with everything has already been counted, so I'm going to write zero here. So basically, if you have six books, the first one can be paired up with five books, the second one can be paired up with four more books, the third one can be paired up with three more books, and this one can be paired up with two E and F, this one can be paired up with only one E, F, and F, you've already counted all the pairs of F. So once again, let's take a look at, look at this. A can be paired up with B, C, D, E, and F. B can be paired up with C, D, E, and F. C can be paired up with D, E, F. D can be paired up with E and F. E can be paired up with F. Now, Using this technique, we can conclude that if you have six books, the total number of pairs you can get is six, uh, sorry, five. You start with five because the first book can be paired up with five other books. Five plus, four plus, three plus, two, two plus, one plus, zero is equal to. 15. Now, our goal is to find this answer for 12 books. And how do we do that? Arguing exactly the same way without drawing a picture, I can conclude that the first book can be paired up with, if I have 12 books, let's write it down, 12 books. How many pairs? How many pairs? That's what I'm looking for. 
Uh, the answer is the first book can be paired up with 11 other books, then the next one 10, dot dot dot, it'll go all the way down to 1. Now, of course, we can add all these numbers, but I'm going to use Gauss's technique to find the sum of 10 plus, uh, sorry, 11 plus 10 plus 9 plus 8 plus 7 plus 6 plus 5 plus 4 plus 3 plus 2 plus 1. And using Gauss's method, we can write this in reverse order. So, if we add 11 to 1, we're going to get 12, and we know each pair is going to be 12 here. And of course, by pair, we mean the pair of numbers like ele this is a pair 11 and 1, 10 and 12, 9 and 3, 1 and 11. They'll all add up to 12. So what's the sum of the first line? There will be 11, that will be 11 times 12. 11 times 12 which turns out to be 132. Now, if you just multiply 11 times 12, that gives you the sum of both lines, this and this. You are really interested in the sum of one of the two lines. They're identical, so you have to divide this 132 by 2 to get the final answer, just using Gauss's technique. 66, that's our answer.